let's talk about it. Let's okay. talk about it, cause this brother is uh, somebody who's who's been a pioneer in many ways, and to be having mm-hmm. hidden conversations through his art. Um, as a writer, as a performer, as an actor, as an activist, mm-hmm. um, that's always he's always found this intersection between education and comedy that I think has been <laughs> extremely successful. Yeah. So I've seen him on Off Broadway, uh, in Off Off Broadway. I've seen him on Broadway where he's. I've seen him on the big screen, um, where I've always felt like I had a nice big plate of food when uh, after I leave one of his performances. Mm-hmm. Uh, for years, he's been in the front lines, and he's been bringing our attention to accomplishment of Latinx people um, over the centuries, over the decades, and he's back at it uh, with his uh, North American tour, Latin History for Morons. Um, but it's not the only thing he's done. DB and I were actually having this conversation earlier in the office, and you want to make sure that you pointed out some of his key characters and key and key uh, projects that he's worked on. I guess I could start with uh, Orlando's favorite movie, Hanging with the Homeboys. Oh, my God, I love that <laughs> flick. <laughs> That's such a crazy flick. I loved it. I'm from the Bronx, so <laughs> watch it. Uh, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it was what was happening, right? Yeah, it was all Just no more kids from the hood, mm-hmm. just... Wanting to have a party and then coming to Manhattan to get into trouble because they're kids of color. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, uh, my favorite TV show was Miami Vice. And when you played Calderon's oh son God. and you killed Tubbs' uh, sister, I mean, his girlfriend and, and his son, which was like a crazy scenario. And blew up my own sister. Bl- blew up your own sister, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was a bad guy. You also played another character, but that's a little too deep. I did, so anyway. I did. Yeah. I played two characters and I went to them. I go, how can I play two characters? I had nobody cares. Yeah, but they did that go, a lot great. of Miami Vice. So, anyway, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so we had like Spawn, Carlito's Way. Last oh. time you were here, you talked about pissing off Al Pacino, oh, which is a great yeah, story. Poor Al. And there's also a great story that people have time to read. He did a interview where you talked about the take because you directed it and you said it was like one of the worst experiences, but also one of the best learning experiences. Oh my god! Everything that could possibly go wrong in that movie—I didn't direct it—but everything that could go wrong in a in a movie went on that movie. The first day we started shooting, we were shooting in a, in a tough hood in in, in Boyle Heights, mm-hmm. and there's some 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 hoodies came in, and the craft service guy wouldn't let them eat. So he choked one of the kids. The kid took out the gun, and they started. It went on, and then and then the cops came, oh, shut real. down our set, and then hair and makeup quick because they got scared. So Rosie was like, "I can't do my own hair. I got Caribbean <laughs> hair," but she had to do her own hair. So it, her hair looks so fucked up in the movie. <laughs> I, I recently wow. saw him in uh, "The Sun Is Also a Star," and then he's starring in, of course, uh, "When They See Us." Oh my God, what a powerful, yeah, yeah, yeah and so, a powerful piece. And he's got his tour right now, so please welcome John Leguizamo. Yes, thank you for having me on. Thank you. I didn't mean to interrupt. Nah. <laughs> Nah, Every but, time you were talking, <laughs> uh, but to all your work is just it's just had that kind of effect on people. And when they see us, uh, you play Raymond Santana Sr. Right? Yeah, the dad. I played the, the dad. You played the yep. dad, and uh, we had Michael K. Williams here. Oh my back. God, how great is he? Uh, oh man, he's, he's just brilliant. He's ascended to a whole other pl- yep. uh, stratosphere now. We had we've had Ava on the show as well. Um, Ava, it's it's a, her best work to date. She was yeah. so methodical about mm-hmm. getting it right. She even called. Uh, Linda Fairstein. Really? Yeah. And she said to her, I want to get your opinion. I have the transcripts, the court transcripts. Uh-huh. I have the kids, the dads. I have all their their uh, uh, input. I want yours. I want to I want to get this so factually right. And she said, nah, she said, I don't, I don't have anything to say to you. Linda, she had nothing to say. No, she didn't. I think she was afraid. I mean, uh-huh. uh, obviously from her op-eds, uh-huh. th- it shows that. How, how crazy she is! She goes, wait a minute. The D, she said the DNA, uh, you know, doesn't prove that they weren't there. Of course it does. It does. What is she? The mean guy about confessed yes. and said, "I did it by myself." The DNA matches. I mean, the, come what, on. What just, do you? Because even uh, President Trump put out a whole full page right. ad about you know back in the day. Back in the day, he wanted them executed. He wanted them executed, and then when brought up recently that you know the DNA uh, exonerate evidence them. exonerates them, somebody admitted to confessing it confessing to right. it and all he went back to well they admitted to it as kids they were coerced right, to, right. you know uh, right. But, but why you think so many people won't apologize well she doesn't want to apologize because she just lost all her book deals she was kicked off every board uh-huh. that's why she didn't want to apologize because okay. she's hoping somehow she doubles down she's going to get all this back yeah I don't think so. And the other one, uh, F- uh, Federer, was kicked out of Columbia University by her own students. She was a, uh, a law professor. Mm-hmm. 
and, and they weren't having it. They, they protested weren't having her it. presence. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, because she, you know, she, she, for, you know, they forced these kids, and and they and they knew maybe, maybe they didn't know that the, the the that the evidence was forced, but the evidence was forced. These mm-hmm. kids didn't commit these crimes, and they were forced to confess. And I talked to the dad, mm-hmm. the one that I'm playing, Santana Senior, and you know they thought their innocence, that their innocence would somehow, I guess people sometimes believe that just because you're innocent that that's going to save you. Yeah. yeah. And that's not how the law works. Yeah. You Ooh. can't sign anything. Don't the takeaway is don't sign anything and don't say and call for your lawyer. Ask for your lawyer. Yeah. yeah. Please ask for your lawyer. Yeah. Cuz there was another Latin kid. There were two Latin kids. Mm-hmm. And the other one got away. He didn't he did, he wasn't forced. There were six kids and he yeah. because he wouldn't testify and he wouldn't sign anything. He he was able to get he out. He was able to get yeah, out. Yeah, because he somehow had the strength of 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 knowledge and going. I'm not doing anything until my lawyer's here, and I'm not signing anything. Yeah. The others were younger. Uh huh. You know, they Corey were so Smith, innocent. Uh, who was a friend of mine who um, lived. Oh by no me. way. Yeah, and I, when I first moved to New York, I tell this story. I didn't know who he was. I just knew him as a friend from my right, neighborhood right. who just loved Tupac. The, yeah. Yeah. So we would hang out, hang out, and he started telling me the story of what happened to him, but I didn't make the correlation between the Central Park Five and him because I grew up on the West Coast mm. and it wasn't oh, as wow. prominent, you know, on the West Coast, the right, whole right. No, story. Was, was, so he's telling me all these horrible things that happened to him in Rikers uh, when he was locked up and all these different things. And then later in life, I realized that he was the same Corey from the Central Park Five. Well, now the Exonerated Five. Now the Exonerated <laughs> yeah. the I like exonerated that terminology. Five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that better. Powerful work, Corey Wise. Corey Wise. Yeah, Corey yes. Wise. Yeah, uh, powerful work uh, you've been doing, John. And then even uh, this North American tour, Latin History for Morons. Uh, let's play this clip real quick that I thought was really interesting, something you said. It blew my mind when I found out that we Latin people had helped out in the American Revolution. 10,000 unknown Latino patriots fought out of a total of 80,000 American troops. That's one out of eight. And some of us are generals. And Cuban women in Virginia sold their jewelry, their hoop earrings and their door knockers (laughs) to feed the patriots. But the illest Latin hero I found for you was this General Bernardo Galvez. And this homie donated $70,000 worth of weapons to George Washington. So we also financed that war. So we too are the sons and daughters of the American Revolution, my man. They didn't teach us that in the history books no. I read, man. I don't... Come on, OQ. Come on, what's that about, man? <laughs> One out of eight? Like, uh, they did not teach us that no. in our American history books. It's crazy. And, and Galvez, the guy I was talking about, that general, he had an army of 3,000. Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Mexicans, freed slaves, and Native Americans, and, and they kicked the British out out of Texas, mm-hmm. Louisiana, and and the Panhandle. He yeah. was like the George Washington of, of the South. Yeah, and they don't. And they, they, there's no credit. Where's that? Where's that credit put? I mean, but you know, it's a power grab. Obviously, it's uh-huh. it's it's a way. If 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 you put the, these facts into textbooks, then you have to respect these people. Then you have to give them offices in government, and then you and then you can't take away their lands, or you or you can't take away their homes. Uh huh. And that's what it's about. That's what it's about. It's about power grab. I mean, that's why black history isn't in in those textbooks the way it should be as well. Uh huh. Uh, what are some of the things, and we talk about that all the time too, that that people may not know about Latin history that you can learn in Latin history for morons, like things that you even figured out. Oh my God! Well, well, also the the, the um in uh, the Civil War, twenty thousand Latin people fought uh-huh. in the North and the South. I'm sorry. We, we let people go where they pay us. You know, I'm sorry. I, I, I apologize for that. Pay more in the South, dog. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that, that was kind of bad. I mean, uh, <laughs> celebrating some of those Latin people is like celebrating somebody who pushed Rosa Parks off the bus. So it's no, not no, like, no, no. no, it's not so cool. It's not so cool. But the, the ones in the North, yeah. Yes. yes <laughs> yeah, I, I like those. Um, but uh, so um, this is um, – this is the sec. This is the first time you've been on tour for this, though, right? Or is it? Well, I started. I I, I, started I developed a show on tour, tour, and then I'm going back out before the 2020 election, going okay. out there trying to flip minds and change hearts. Um, you also uh, you've been an ambassador uh, for Puerto Rico, right? Or is it? Yeah, yeah, I was for the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Okay, yeah. now what are you seeing now in terms of um, 
what's going on in Puerto Rico? But for for about a year, we were talking about Puerto Rico and it needing aid. And and, and what are you seeing in Puerto Rico now? Are we seeing any improvement? Uh, well, you know, he th- th- Trump is is backing out out of giving the funding that they deserve and they, they need. I mean, every other state who's had a devastating hurricane like this has had ample funding. Uh huh. But he but he says, you know, it's too far. It's across the ocean. It's so far away. It's not. <laughs> it's like only ninety miles away. Yeah. Just just give it give us give them the funding that they deserve and they need to rebuild themselves before uh-huh. the next hurricane hits. Uh huh. Mm. Wow. And it's the only only place, only uh, you know, because it's 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 a, it's a it's like a commonwealth. It's not even a a state. Mm-hmm. They can't even vote. They don't yeah. have a vote. They have a they have two Congress people, but they don't have a vote that counts. And and they can't vote for the president. Mm-hmm. And Mitch McConnell won't. They they want to be a, they wanted to be a state, and. Uh, the Mitch McConnell won't give that because he knows that'll be 3.5 million votes against him and the Republicans. You think? You think every Puerto Rican would vote against? Not him? every Puerto Rican. Okay, okay yeah, so wait, yeah, what? Okay, three? Yeah, okay, three yeah, million? Yeah, yeah, I'll go say. Yeah, no, no, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Come on, man. No, I know, I know how it is. Yeah, yeah. But Latin people for Republicans are like roaches for raid. It just doesn't make sense. John Leguizamo is here. I have a question for you. Why? What the hell? She just got it. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it took a second, but it, but it hit home. <laughs> Sorry, boss. What? No, no, it's okay. Uh, when you think about the whole defunding of Puerto Rico and the reason why a lot of aid hasn't been sent to Puerto Rico after the hurricane is the sense of othering, right? Of is course, that of Puerto course. Rico are not American citizens. You saw how he threw those of- towels at them? Who, yeah. who goes to a place and, and tosses towels the and towels. make them jump and beg for it? It's disgusting. Like exactly. Seals. Yeah. How do you think, though, and I love that you're doing this Latin history for morons, because I think this is a way of education, an educational tool yeah, yeah. to get people to understand that Puerto Rico is an other, right? And there is no othering. But how do we move forward to get America to begin to view Puerto Rico and Puerto Ricans as American citizens and not this othering that we see existing right now? Because that's the reason why there's lack of funding, the lack of statehood, right, right. lack of representation. Well, I, I think one of the, I mean, one of the big issues is having... Our, our contributions put into history textbooks and and and, and uh, on the History Channel and 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 in Ken Burns' documentaries showing that four hundred thousand Latinos and a lot of them Puerto Rican fought in World War II and that we're the most decorated minority in every single war America's ever had. We're the second oldest ethnic group in America after Native Americans. So it's not like we just got here mm-hmm. and we're just coming here. We helped build this country in so many different ways. And we just don't get that credit. If you put that credit back in the textbooks, back into history, you can't look at us in the same way. You have to look at us with respect and you can't just denigrate us. You can't not give us a, a, a cabinet member. I mean, Trump doesn't have any Latinx people in, in his cabinet. Mm-hmm. I mean, how is that possible? We're almost 70 million people in this country. How do you ignore us? Mm-hmm. Huh. John Leguizamo is here. Ricardo's on the line from Bakersfield. Good morning, Ricardo. Hey, Big Ricardo. Ricardo, hey, Good Ricky. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Sway. Good Heather morning. B. Hi. Hey, everybody. Good morning, man. Hey, Go ahead. Everybody. Hey, Mr. John Leguizamo, man. Yeah, Big yeah, yeah. fan. Thank you, brother. Big fan of your work from Spawn. Empire is one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> I love that flick, uh, too. Be, being a, a Chicano out here in California, I, I love everything you do for the Latinx community. You know, we're very proud of you, everything you've done. Oh, thank you, you, man. I try. I'm glad, you know, my kids will have somebody good to look up to and and know they could do anything. We appreciate it, and we will see you when you come out to Cali later this year for your show. Oh, bet, bet. Come down, man. Nice nice call right there, man. Yeah, yeah, that was beautiful. Beautiful, Ricardo. You're a citizen, man. (laughs) Okay, cool, man. Let's go to Sacramento. Royce, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, uh, family. Hey, John, I wanted to congratulate you on um, all your Netflix um, shows. I watched the uh, Latin uh, History for Morons and uh, found it very educational and funny as well. And I just wanted to piggyback on, you know, this, this is a message for all, all people, and all, specifically people of color. When, whenever you're stopped and questioned by the police, that part, when, if they're going to arrest you and they say you have a right to remain silent, Please use that yeah. until you get representation. That is a powerful, powerful statement. You have a right to remain silent. Learn Re- to keep your mouth shut. And remain silent. Get somebody, you know, to speak on your behalf to protect your interests. 
I mean, he's right. He's right. But how sad is that? I mean, yeah. how is I mean that that we people of color have to protect ourselves against the police mm-hmm. when you're just driving the car or or walking down the street. You have to be aware that you might be treated as a perp, even yeah. though you haven't done anything. Done I mean, nothing. that's it's a sad state of affairs. That's why when they see us, it's so important because that's not an isolated, unique incident Uh that happened in 1989 no it's happening now Mm -hmm. everywhere 30 years later and 30 years prior right right and then (laughs) 30 years years before that that. i mean Uh, i talk about in the show that that it it it, latin people 600 latin people were hung lynched in america from 1830 to 1930 and a lot of them were children wow they would they would hang them if if they were in the southwest and they were trying to go to schools. It, it, it's terrible. In the 1930s, the Repatriation Act, Herbert Hoover deported 500,000 land people who were American citizens and born here because he wanted their land and wanted to use it as as Trump tries to use Latin people and immigrants sort of as a, as a political ploy to, to get power mm-hmm. to, to other other people and to attack others because it gives them power. It gives them something to hate. It's easy for people to hate. It's harder for people to, to, to love, and it's harder for... It's hard. It's easier to go against something than to go for, for something. something. Yeah, mm. you think that's what the the uh, what we're seeing at the border. You think that's what it, what it's about? Absolutely. I mean, the, he the cuts the funding and... from Central America, mm-hmm. so it aggravates the situation. So now people have who are in trouble and in need are losing their funding from from the United States, which we cause their problems. And now, so they, where are they going to go? They want to come to America because now they, they're they're in trouble over there. So he, he's creating a, a worse problem. And then he separates p- parents from their children. I mean, mm-hmm. that's such an inhumane thing. He's causing the crises mm-hmm. so that he can use that in his platform. Look, there's still a problem. I have to. Uh, what I will, you have to vote for me because I'll, I'll, I'll solve it for you. Is that your? Um, that's my best. That's, that's, my that's best. Trump. Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do him in the show. <laughs> okay, you're still working on that one. Are you? Okay, all right, all right. Take that back to the <laughs> workshop. Okay, right. I'm, tink- I'm tinkering with it. Okay, we got Antonio on the line. <laughs> I'll do a Mitch McConnell. Oh, okay. uh, Mitch McConnell's easier. Antonio, <laughs> there you go. You got John McConnell on the line. Go ahead, man. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's your comment? How's it going, everybody? Doing well. What's your comment? Oh, I just wanted to say I appreciate all the work that John has done. And, you know, I'm a Puerto Rican from Texas, born and raised in a military town. So not having that that background or that history for Latins, it you know, watching your Netflix special really opened my eyes and made me want to go to Puerto Rico and learn a lot more about my history. Mm, that's awesome, man. Yeah, so I appreciate everything you've done, um, you know, and continuing to do, man. I really do appreciate that. That's what's up, man. Thank you, thank you. I'm I'm glad, man. I mean, I I, I had this little, I I, was just, I just did uh, two shows at the Apollo, and there was this young Latin kid, 19 years old, who came up to me, Mexican kid, and he was like, "I'm so angry. I'm so I want to do so." And but but I learned in your show that to take my anger and my rage and my violence. And weaponize it through knowledge. That knowledge mm-hmm. can be a weapon, and mm-hmm. information can be a weapon. And that's what I wanted to put forth, man. That that educating yourself and using this knowledge, you can use words to defend yourself, and and to fight for yourself. Yeah. It doesn't have, all have to be. You know, we don't have to blow things up or or use fisticuffs. You know what I mean? That's what you've done, and you've done it in such a great way, and continue to do it. Latin history for morons. You want to find more out, more about it? How can? What's the platform they could go on and find out? Uh, what? Latin history for morons. Uh, it should be. It's, it's a. It's a website for the tour, and you can find out where I'm going to be, what city, and and also it has the syllabus of all the books that I recommend to read. Okay, there it is, John Leguizamo, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming by, bro. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me. Sway. Every time, every time we've been doing Big this. Big fan for of years, yours man. forever. Forever, bro. I'm see, a fan see, of yours. You're a teenager. Man. Come on, man. When you were on MNTV, you remember, remember I used to that? come up? You did, right? <laughs> <laughs> we sat and he was just a that. pup back then. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you say, DB? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Black.